Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and we're going to talk about something exciting today. Um, we're going to talk about modeling the U.S. the U.S. presidential race of 2024 in existing Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition um, campaign uh, settings in existing Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition settings, uh, specifically Exandria. All right. So there's a huge, incredibly exciting new um, announcement. Uh, actually, a new, a new exciting emerging situation in the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Okay, and that is uh, followed all the way through here. Uh, people are talking about a totally 100% new Democrat ticket for 2024. What? Like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty shocking. You're 100% right. Like. Wait, how do we arrive here? What's happening? <laughs> like you're, you're not wrong. This is like crazy town, man. Like this, you're like, what? Are you serious? Like no Biden, no Kamala Harris? Yes, that's what's being discussed within the Duns- within the Democrat community. Okay, all right. So let's talk about how do we arrive here. Um, Biden is at an all time approval low rating low of thirty eight percent. He has thirty eight percent approval. That is not good. That is a very, very bad. Um, and, you know, and, uh, you know, it's really, really not um, not good at all. Like, very alarming, right? So, um, and people are also, I, you know, there's a lot of, so The Hill talked about this and Breaking Point talked about this. And they gave lots of reasons. I'm going to add a reason. So, basically, by the time this uh, this four years is up, Joe Biden will be 83 years old, right? And a lot of people are like, if, if you're 83 years old, should you be, have the hardest job in the world, right? Like, um, and now people are, now the question is going to be like 87. If you're 87 years old, should you like, and that's what a second term is, right? So a lot of people are like, we don't know if this is a good idea, right? Like, and, uh, you know, um, and like a perfect example is like, the Hill showed uh, the COP26, the United Nations climate change. Biden, they were talking, like, there was a guy on stage saying, this is the most important thing we're ever going to talk about, you know, in the next 20 years. And it looked like, and Joe Biden had his eyes closed and people were wondering if he was asleep. Like, like this is a, it, it's a problem, right? Like, <laughs> all right, so you got 38% approval rating. And so you're like, and so people are like, well, we got a president that nobody's really happy with. Uh, A lot of people are like, should we have an 87 year old president? Like that's, that doesn't seem like the greatest idea for, you know, just human bodies break down human, you know, like it's just, we don't know if this is a great idea. Right. And then it's, so you're like, well, wait, Scott, you can put Kamala Harris in, right? (laughs) You can't. (laughs) Here's why her approval rating is 10 points lower than the president, right? It's at 28%. So the Democrats are like, oh my gosh, we are heading. And so the big, the big fear is that, uh, Donald Trump will just waltz in and absolutely stomp the Biden Kamala ticket. Right. And also if you were like Kamala and somebody else, Kamala's, you know, um, approval ratings are lower than Biden's. Right. So Democrats are very, the Democrat community is very seriously talking about a new ticket. What could the new ticket be? Well, it would be, um, here's the people on the short list. Buttigieg, uh, Pete Buttigieg, Stacey Abrams. I really like Stacey Abrams. She's a really smart lady, a uh, good speaker. She made a critical mistake not running for president in 2020 because nobody knows her. That's the problem. Like people don't know politicians, right? They know world leaders, Right now, Stacey Abrams ain't a world leader. She's just a politician, right? It was a critical mistake for her not to run in 2020, right? But, you know, boots on the ground, like, you know, who she is and the job that needs to get done, she could be da- she could be a dangerous competitor, right? Like, And I like her. I think she's really bright. Um, I like Stacey Abrams a lot. Um, then the other, uh, and actually not a lot of people are real excited about Pete Buttigieg, but there is one, boy, one, one thing that people are talking about, and that's Michelle Obama. What? Man, and the trick there would be convince her to run, right? Because, like, she's got a nice life. She's just collecting checks from Netflix and whoever else wants to write her a check. And well-deserved, man. She's famous, right? But, like, and who wants to, like, you know, like, determine if drone strikes are going to be done. If you could be like, uh, hey, I'd like to have, um, 
you know, uh, dinner with Meghan Markle, you know, like, you know, so it's going to be hard to get her to run, but she could be a serious competitor. And honestly, I think Michelle Obama could beat Trump. And that's the whole ball of wax now who could beat Trump, right? So there's this huge, new, um, exciting, emerging um, reality for the Democrats, right? How do we model this in our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition game, right? But I'll, I'll, I'll beat you to your question. You're like, why should we, Scott? Well, there's some very good reasons why you should model the 2024 U.S. presidential election in your Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition game, okay? There's benefits from it. One, it can help you determine where you're going to put your vote, okay? Because by modeling these with existing Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign settings that, in my opinion, clearly had the U.S. the U.S political structure in mind when they were built, right, you can, you can find some things that you, you can find out some <coughs> patterns that you didn't expect to see, okay? Uh, in addition to that, you can determine where you should put your electoral activity energy, right? Who should you stump for? Who should you, uh, you know, put social media posts up? Where, you know, should you put uh, a, a sign on your lawn? Should you actually get to the point where you're knocking on doors and getting signatures for candidates, right? All these things, by modeling the U.S. 2024 presidential election now in Dungeons & Dragons, 5th edition campaigns, that very clearly have U.S. politics analogs, it can give you a better idea of what to of what you're going to accomplish. In, in, a bet, the game can let you see patterns in American politics and foibles or, or strengths in candidates that you might not have expected. All right, so let's talk about it. All right, what Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign setting has U.S. political structures already built in? All right, this is my humble opinion. In my humble opinion, it's Exandria. It clearly is modeled after U.S. politics, right? Let me make my case for that. So one, this, this was made by Critical Role. I don't think that, I don't think for one second they did this consciously. I think they did it subconsciously. So first of all, Critical Role is highly engaged uh, and actually is quite engaged in U.S. politics. Go look at their, their posts. They have a lot of very pro-left posts and zero or some significantly negative pro-right posts, right? So they are not divorced from American politics, not even remotely, right? Okay? All right. Um, so let's set that there, okay? So I think an engaged group of critical role writers went forward. All right, so let's look at Exandria. Exandria is the Dwendalian Empire, a white authoritarian leader, right, who is very for a specific group of races, which is um, dwarves, elves, and humans, all the Tolkien races, and they live in harmony in Dwendalian Empire and really don't have an open door to people who want to migrate in, which would be the non-Tolkien races who all live over in Zorhas, okay, and Zorhas has uh, now... The Dwendalian Empire is led by King Bertrand, right? Who I think was very clearly modeled after Trump. Like, if you, if you look at, it seems like drop dead simple that King Bertrand is Trump. But I, that's my opinion. Take a look for yourself. See if you think I'm wrong, right? So you have a conservative section, and then on the progressive side in Zorhas, you have Bright Queen um, Lay- Laylas, right? And she's repping all the non-Tolkien races, right? Then finally, you have the... And I think she represents the progressives in American politics, right? And then you have the Menagerie Coast, which is uh, five marquees who lead ports, okay? And I think Menagerie Coast, um, the the con... uh, Yeah, the, um, the... yeah, so the Menagerie Coast represents the corporate interests and the um, and the uh, basically corporations and the media. Okay, so I, that's what I see, right? So how would you model this out? Well, I'll tell you right now, you, you're not going to replace the the you know the the marquees who lead the ports in Menagerie Coast are well loved and they have a great situation down there, right? You're absolutely not going to replace. Um, King Bertrand in the Dwendalian Empire, because his his grip on uh, on the leadership of that empire is very solid. Okay, but you might replace Bright Queen, uh, Bright Queen Lelas, 
Right Wing Queen Lelos uses these uh, magical items, which, which are called Luxons. Luxons make it so that you can connect with your ancestors and you have multiple identities within yourself. But the problem is a lot of people think that Bright Queen Lelos is uh, slipping and does not have control of her mental faculties. So in, um, in Zorhas, you did very much have a people who are saying, do we have a leader who understands what's happening with us and has the mental capacity to lead us? Hmm. That's where you want to talk about putting a new queen on the throne because that nation is having that conversation. Very, very interesting, right? So you can model the, the emerging, exciting 2020 U.S. presidential race in a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign that clearly has a U.S. analog for literally the conservatives, the progressives, the media, and the, um, uh, and the, the media and corporations, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's clear as day when you look at Xandria. So I feel Xandria is a great, is an absolutely perfect place to model out uh, the U.S. presidential race that is emerging out, and put this into your game, and then watch for patterns, right, and see what happens as um, you know as the po- as the set the political gears in motion, and see what patterns emerge, and see if that teaches you where you should vote, where your vote should go, and what political activities you should do in 2024. All that's my opinion. How are you using Exandria? I'd love to hear you, how you use Exandria in your game. Um, and, uh, and also, do you agree that clearly the critical roles team's connection to U.S. politics absolutely subconsciously slipped into their construction of Exandria? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.